Hi people, welcome to Chess 24-7 and this is the 6th installment in the playlist of Chess Imbalances and today's video is all about material gain or material losses. So with that said, let's dive into it. Of all the imbalances in chess, a material plus carries more rotation in the yields. An extra bishop or in top flight events, even an extra pawn is often more than enough to give you a victory. For this reason, you must be very careful not to give away your units without just cause. Unfortunately, holding on to your pieces is not always so easy. I mean, if you can simply not give anything away, you will see hundreds of points pad your rating. How can we avoid this type of cross blunder? Well, Jeremy has to address some points, which I'll be discussing later in the video. Well, for these points, Jeremy has not provided us each and every game for each and every point. I mean, it's really obvious to understand why material gain is important or why it's good to hold material because if you have more pieces on the board, it will be pretty much easy for you to attack your opponent if he has less material. So, rule first is material beats initiative if you can neutralize the opponent's pulses and equalize the game. Then your extra material will slowly but surely bring him down. For example, I, for example, if, if your opponent is attacking your king side and is wasting away his material just to open up the king side, and if you could still manage to properly put your king in a safe zone, by that time he regains the attack. It will be pretty easy for you because you are up the material. Rule two is quite related to rule 1, it says that material gives you an extra unit of force. If you make this unit an active participant in the game, you will have your opponent outnumbered. Obviously, if your opponent has a rook, a queen and a knight and you have two rooks, two bishops and two knights and you don't have a queen, so I think it's it will be much more easier for you to win the game than your opponent because you have more pieces in the game, so you will be having more influence over the board as compared to your opponent. Rule 3rd says, it's a very important rule by the way, Rule 3rd says material edges like exchange of bishop are only useful if you can give rook an open file to fly on. An advanced centralized knight can easily beat an inactive useless rook. This means that you must be careful not to allow simple point count the, to influence your more than the particular position. For example, in the po following position, if we look at the black's point count alone, we could have to say that black seems to be an easy winner. He has a pawn and a rook for a knight, 6 points to 3. However, his rooks are completely helpless and his extra pawn on d7 is immobile. On the other hand, the white knight on d6 dominates the board. Black cannot prevent white from playing rook c7 with a, with a winning bind. Rule 4 says, when you win material, you might find your pieces are off balance and without purpose. This is because they have fulfilled their mission and now need a new goal. If they are off balance, don't keep lashing out. Instead, bring your pieces back together, make everything tight and safe, and then prepare a new plan based on your material edge. Remember, extra material gives you a long-term advantage. You don't have to be in a rush to use it. For example, in the following position, black enjoys more space due to his strong pawn chain on b7 to e4. The things that white can crow about are his kingside pawns majority and his material advantage. Even more, rooks only reach their full potential on open files and here in this position, unfortunately for white, no completely open file exists. Still, if you want to make use of that extra rook, you'll have to find a way to create a file for it. So, these were the points that are given by Jeremy Sliman in his book, How to Research Your Chess in the section of Material. And yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like that Jeremy has provided us very few amount of points, but that's how it is. I mean, uh, this point requires not much of uh, explanation because I mean, if you are up the exchange, you have to improve the position of your pieces. I mean, if you're up the exchange, it doesn't mean that you just stay over there in a dynamic way. You have to improve your position. You have to put pieces into an, to, into much better squares and to provide them a much better mission as Jeremy has stated in his book. 
so yeah that's it for this video and i i mean i know this is this video is quite quite short only four minutes long because there are only four points available and few things before closing this video would be in summary that if you see a pawn uh, which is loose and you can grab it but that pawn might give your opponent an open file then you should definitely not capture that pawn or if you capture a piece by which your opponent who is underdeveloped starts getting developed then you should definitely not take that material for example i'll show you a very famous opening here why it has started with this famous e4 opening and black replies with c5 sicilian and there are numerous ways to play sicilian close sicilian open sicilian but here white plays d4 he takes d4 and now he plays c3 c takes d takes c3 and now the white side is down material but he gets the pawn back and gets development in his area of of the team i mean i think i have seen i have shown you this this video uh, this whole opening in my previous videos i get i guess in the topic of tempo i guess i don't remember it exactly but i have shown you this uh, opening well there is another opening where capturing or winning material is not considered to be that great i'll show you it in just a moment the name of this opening is danish gambit here white opens with e4 c5 d4 c takes d4 c3 giving away more material d takes c3 and bishop c4 giving away another pawn c takes b2 and bishop takes b2 here white is down two pawns but he has beautiful diagonals for his bishops both of his bishops are aiming down toward the king and the range of these bishops are i mean just beautiful aesthetic although i think i don't like this opening that much because i think white can still manage to get off these diagonals if he manages to castle on the queen side and then these diagonals would be useless but that's not what we are talking about here black was busy in capturing pieces and was giving white opportunities to develop and although he's up exchange but he the white side is much better developed and can castle on the next to next move only because he has to develop his knight to f3 and he can castle easily on the king side and it would be pretty much easy for white to carry on forward 